Last fall a storm broke one of my grandparents apple trees. This is the leftover of that tree. It looks pretty much like a normal tree, but before that storm it was about twice as big. The trunk that broke wasn't perfectly healthy and grew sideways, so it was just a matter of time until a storm strong enough would break it. It was then supposed to be made into firewood, but when my grandparents asked me if I would need some for wood turning, I said I would take all of it. So I cut them all into rough bowl blanks and brought them to my shop. Now if you don't want to see all the preparation, but just the actual turning, you can click here to skip. There is a little bit of work waiting for me. First of all I have to prepare them all for the lathe and this is already gonna take up a lot of time. Let's do it! I always clean the pieces with a wire brush so I won't dull my bandsaw blade because of dirt. I tried using a wire brush for a drill but the only tool working here is elbow grease. And there's the first big mess to clean up. All the logs are brushed now and next I need to further prepare them for the lathe on the bandsaw. And while I'm doing this I want to see how effective the dust collection on the bandsaw is. Now in order to do that I emptied the dust drawer and next I'm gonna run five logs through the bandsaw without dust collection and this will give me a certain amount of dust and then I do the same thing again with dust collection and I should have a result. So as you can see there's quite a bit on the floor, a little bit on the saw, wow, and this amount in the drawer, that's quite a lot. And here you can see how much this wheel brush captured, also quite a bit. After some cleaning, 5 logs with dust collection. There's pretty much nothing on the floor, a little bit on the table, but that's normal. And in the drawer is about half the amount than without dust collection. Okay, now all of these locks are cut in half. And look at that. Also with dust collection it is a good idea to clean out this all this sawdust from time to time but I can tell that this wheel brush really works well there's just this tiny little bit of dust sticking to the blade the last time I cut up this much green wood the blade was completely gummed up on the inside then I cut them all around with my bandsaw circle jig I explained the whole bow blank preparation process in more detail in this video It was just a matter of repeating this about 50 times. But for the smaller pieces I just cut off the corners. Well, little problem now. As you can see my blade broke. As you can see it broke at the weld. And welding it back together is no option because it got bent quite often, so this blade is garbage. At least I don't have to clean it now. A little bit disappointing because this blade was just two months old and the only thing I cut up with it were the walnut bow blinks. And it should last a little bit longer than this. I try to contact the manufacturer to see if I can get a replacement. But in the meantime I still have to cut up all these pieces into bow blinks. And I have to do this with another blade, but unfortunately none of my other blades are suited for greenwood. But that's the only thing I can do now. I think I have enough bow blinks now. And kind of a big mess in the shop. And if you really like to clean up your shop, well, prepare bowl blanks and you will be satisfied. 
I just can't wait to clean this all up. That's gonna be really fun. So after spending another hour cleaning, I could start with turning the first bow. As usual, this begins with attaching a faceplate. I always start with the lowest RPM on the lathe to see how balanced a piece of wood is and if I can start with the second speed. With this one I definitely have to start with the slowest speed and if it's wobbling this much I like to support it with the tailstock. And now enjoy the video. To prevent the bolts from cracking during the drying process, I coat them with wax from a candle. Friction melts the candle and a thin layer stays on the bowl. Then I use some lathe chips to produce more heat by friction that spreads the wax evenly. This time I also wanted to experiment with a coat of glue that slows down the drying process. I don't know how well it works, so I only made a few samples. Now after two weeks of turning I'm finally done with the turning and I ended up with a total of 65 bolts ready for drying. These here are the bolts which I covered with glue and they turned yellow quite interesting. But I still prefer the method with the candle because it's super fast, super cheap and super easy to apply. And I think you can imagine the amount of chips that 65 bolts made. I am so excited about cleaning up. The Lathe Chip Mountain. Mm -hmm. 
I ended up with 28 bags full of lathe chips. I think I can light up a lot of fires next winter. Lastly, I wrote down the rough date and the wood species on all the tenants of the bowls, so I know in the future how long they have dried yet. Thank you.